friends, this is Shelly from Koala Knits and Knacks, and I am going to show you how to make this absolutely gorgeous basic beanie. Um, I, I just, I've never used this yarn, and um, when I saw it, I thought, I'm going to make a video and do a tutorial on that. Um, so also, um, and I'll show you in a minute what the yarn is, but please uh, follow through to the end because I'm going to show you a really neat item that one of the members on my Facebook group, um, her and her bro brother um, designed and it's called Pomkins. And I'm gonna use that in this video and give you the links and stuff below in the description as to how you can get those. So um, get your supplies ready and happy knitting. The yarn I'm going to use is called F Facets by Loops and Threads and I just thought this scarf picture on the front was really pretty and I thought oh I bet you that'll make a gorgeous um, beanie. So the color is sea glass um, and uh, I'm, I'm going to give it a go and see how it is. Um, it's a four weight yarn. Um, I have a funny feeling it's going to be a little hard to use because it'll probably snag a little bit but that's okay we're gonna we're gonna give it a go. So bring your last weight and your first black needle in yarn in line with your yarn feeder there. We're gonna do a long tail cast on going behind that first black needle, in front of the next, behind and in front, all the way around. I think it's gonna be beautiful. So I haven't seen it yet, I'm doing this with you, so we'll both be surprised. So it's behind that last white needle, I know that, that I've done it correctly. I'm going to set my yarn counter, my row counter to zero. And we're going to begin. Okay, I'm going to put um, some tension on the back. Once I get going here for a bit, I'm going to add my yarn tensioner because uh, I'm coming to really enjoy that using that. It took me a while. It was like a learning curve. Um, but I'm really liking it, actually. And I think that I would put it on the middle tension. You still hear that little squeak in my in my machine um, since I cleaned it uh, because I wiped away too much of the grease. <laughs> and so I'm going to open it up again and um, and fix that. And I said I was going to do it before my next project and I haven't. I did buy the, the lithium. I should show you that one second. This is it. I hope you can see it. I hope the camera's low enough. But it's white lithium grease and one of the uh, members from my group suggested it. Um, I got it from... Canadian Tire and it was like seven something so um, I'm gonna actually do that uh, quite soon maybe tonight I'll even tackle it okay but for now you might hear a little a little um, squeaking from my, my machine but uh, that will that will be taken care of later but on the same hand I will tell you that this machine's never run better since I've cleaned it and if you haven't cleaned your machine you go ahead and you watch that video that I posted about how to clean your machine and reset your your handle so that it's um it's tighter and it doesn't jiggle all over the place and I also when I was in there realized how to move my needles a little bit closer to the to the um yarn feeder here so uh I, I think it's going to really prevent a lot of tuck stitches I can't say that for sure but I I really believe it will okay so we're going to keep going we're going to knit 140 rows a straight knit just like this and when I uh get to the place where my my project is hitting the table um, I will show you what I do with it I roll it up okay now this this little hole here is when I put my my uh, 22 needle addy on the machine here um, it's hard to roll your project up into a donut on the 22 needle machine so it just my husband made a hole in the table <laughs> and it just goes uh, down through there so um, that's what that hole is there for but I'm going to go ahead and knit until probably I get to 55 or 60 rows and then I'll come back on and I'll show you what I do. Oh man, this is looking so rich and gorgeous. Some of you have probably used this already, but I've never, this is my first time using this yarn, so um, I'm excited to see what it looks like. So keep going. We're going to do 140 rows in total, but I'll see you back when it starts to touch the table. Okay, I had to stop and show you this. Like, wow. Is that ever awesome? You know, and to make a, a like a short neck warmer type of drop stitch scarf instead of the regular size or the long ones to make a short one. If I have any any yarn left after I'm doing this, I'm going to I'm going to attempt that and that would just make such a beautiful little set. Um but these colors are unbelievable. And my machine is working like such a charm. So anyways, you keep going and I'll see you when it starts to touch the table. Okay, so I'm just um, inserting this little picture here so I can talk. Um, I was going to stop and show you how I roll it up into a donut when I got to about row 
5560 when it started to touch the table. And I did, in fact, um, think I was recording it <laughs> and I was talking to you and everything. Um, but it was on uh, the photo setting rather than the video. So I wasn't able to record that for you. But all I did was was roll it up into a donut to give it some tension um, as I finished the project. And then I went on to finish 140 rows. So let's continue on from here. All right, so we have our um, project off the machine and we're gonna unroll it. Oh my goodness, I can't believe how beautiful this is. Like, what a gorgeous scarf. Like, just do 300 rows with this and make yourself a, like a gorgeous scarf. Like, I can't, this is just royalty. <laughs> like, that's how beautiful it looks. And I'm going to, I think that I have seen people post um, drop stitch scarfs with this, um, but I've never seen a solid scarf or a beanie. So um, th that look is is quite a bit different. This is just like, like, look at that. I'm just like shocked. <laughs> I like pretty things. So, okay, so that um, we're going to reach in there and we're going to grab this one end. Doesn't matter which end and we're going to bring it through to the other end, okay? And we're going to poke it through that other end so that that's... Um, a little bit further down and then we're going to start oh wouldn't you know that of course it snags okay so i've got to fix that because i'll have a problem all the way up there we go fixed it so we're going to close this one but we're not going to close it tight because i have something to show you i'm so excited about okay um i have on my video on my um channel uh little plastic um pom-pom holders that uh, i made um and i love them they work great but I'm going to show you something a little bit different. You're going to um, use a little pumpkin. I'm gonna use a little pumpkin. Um, Renda is a lady who is a member of my Facebook um, Koala Knits and Knacks group and she and her brother Sam make these and sell them. And we're gonna attach our pom-pom to it and then squeeze it and insert it into there. But before we do that, we have to um, make sure that when we, when we close this that we don't do it um, you know as, as tight as possible because we have to be able to fit that in there so I'm going to show you how to do that we are simply going to grab a pin we're going to stick it in that little hole and we're going to tighten this around that pin just like that okay then I'm going to cut this off a little bit because it's way too long then we're going to take our needle and we're going to close it like we always do a beanie okay so with that around there I'm going to just now go around that top row of stitches. Now I believe that they send you a little, um, if you order these, they send you a little um, thing to, to insert in there to do this with so that it's the right length. Oh, I can't pull this too hard. It feels like it's gonna break. Um, but if I'm wrong, if that's not a thing, <laughs> then just use a pin because it's the perfect, it's the perfect um, width. Now I'm, struggling here because I feel like this is going to break. This yarn is going to break. So, oh my gosh, I don't want to do that. I got to get under that stitch. So generally to get under the first row of stitches, it's, it's not hard, but this one is, um, so I actually paused the camera, the, the video, and I, this is felting and it's ripping right off. So I'm going, I doubled it or, and if this doesn't work, I'm going to use, um, a different yarn to close this this end okay because we don't want this to come undone and I'm gonna just pull on this and see if I get the same problem I'm gonna go and I'm gonna get um, myself some regular four weight yarn from um, from my drawer and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close that off and then tie it to this um, just because like I said, this is the first time I've ever, ever used this yarn. And once you get it all stitched like this, like I'm not ever worried about that coming apart. But but um, tying it around here and snugging it up, it will break. So um, I am going to reinforce it with a different yarn and I'll be right back. All right, so there's always a solution, right? This is just Craft Smart um, Teal Yarn. And I'm going to go around and pick up the top row of all those stitches. And then tie it off, okay? And that's okay. Sometimes we have to make those adaptations to make sure that our our work um, our work is is going to hold. Okay. And so I'm going to go all the way around. 
And I went around twice already with that other yarn, I think, or once and a half, one and a half times anyway. So um, I'm going to just tie this off, take out that pen, tie this off into a knot. I'm going to cut this off. Oh, my world is falling apart. Where's my scissors now? <laughs> sakes alive get up to oh they're up where my cut my yarn okay so i cut that off and i have a hole that's big enough to insert this pumpkin in once i get my pom-pom on it okay um and it, it will fit right into that into that little hole like that and then it'll expand okay so now we're going to take this other one this other side and you know what i'm going to put a video on my channel of uh, renda doing this um because you know she's the she's the one that created it her and sam so um So, you know, she, she's got a, a good video on it and, and I didn't want to, I'm going to tag it maybe partly on to the back, to the bottom of this one too, but I didn't want to, um, neglect putting it on by itself too, because, because, uh, you know, there's people who crochet, um, hats and beanies and stuff and, and they don't, you know, they won't see it if it's just on my knitted channel. So I'm going to go ahead and now I'm going to attach another piece of yarn. I, so I did, I attached, I, I went off camera, but I attached another piece of yarn um, to my needle like I had done before. And then I, I went around this this circle. These, these two short ones are from the inside one that I've already done. But I think you need to leave the pen in when you tie a knot, okay? And then tie it tight. That way that way you can tie this tighter. Like the, the inside one, I didn't leave the pen in. And I, I left it, uh, I didn't tie it tight because um like pull it like this because it would have closed it without the pen in there um but i you know it, it is open so that's good too so then um now that i have tightened that around the pen you can take that out you're going to pull this up okay and then we're going to tie these two off this is going to be the inside so no worries okay and then i'm going to um hide these in between the two the two uh, panels, okay? So go ahead and do that. All right, so I hid the ends and I turned my beanie um, in the other way so that that's uh, the side that, um, that I didn't hide them on. And then I'm gonna take my pom-pom and I'm gonna wrap it around my, pom my pomkin, okay? So I'm gonna wrap it around, put that into the middle, just like that, see? I'm going to keep it so that smooth end is up. I think that's how Renda said to do it, but I'm going to attach her video so you'll get a better idea. <laughs> She's the pro. Um, because the other side of this little pumpkin thing has a little gritty, gritted side. So that, that will um, be up against your beanie and, and uh, stay in place, okay? So then you're going to, once that's secure on there, and you can tie, um, she'll show you how to tie. If you don't use a pom-pom with an elastic on it and you just make one out of the fabric, she'll show you how to put that on here as well, okay? But then you take that pumpkin, and you insert it into that hole that you made, okay, with the pen. Though you didn't, you when you didn't secure it tightly, you you left a little space in there, and that's to fit your pumpkin in. It's a little difficult to get in there, um, because these are sturdy. But that just means that they are going to hold really, really well. So, um, popped it in there. Then I'm going to turn my beanie inside out, and you see how it comes out the other end there. Then you just are going to pull up on it. And see how that elastic came? And then you're going to straighten it out. Like, isn't that fantastic? And then all they have to do is squeeze it to take it off again. Okay? So, there you have it. Like, it's so beautiful. And so, like, I mean, it gives you an option. Because um, if you want to change it out and put a different color pom-pom on there. Or wear it without a pom-pom. Or make a fabric pom-pom that, uh, like, out of the yarn that matches. Um, you have the options to change it. Um, and, yeah, it's just beautiful. So there you have it. Isn't that like just an absolutely gorgeous beanie? I think it's the favorite one I've made so far. Um, so anyways, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please uh, hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And come on over to my Facebook group, Koala Knits and Knacks. We'd love to have you as a part of that. And look for the video that I'm going to now post um, of, of Renda showing a dis um showing how to how to use her pumpkins um she does a, a really nice little video so watch for that and uh and then there'll be the order instructions underneath this video and underneath that next one all right my friends have a great day